Welcome back to Book Break. We have got a challenge for you today. Do you think that you can read five books in five days? Because I think you can. I think you can do it. If you pick good short books, I think you can do it. And even further, I think that with our help, you can make them all five star reads as well. This is the challenge that we are setting you over the summer. There's no time limit, you can do it whichever five days you choose, but I would love to know if you're gonna take the challenge and try and read five books, all five stars, in five days. And I have got some recommendations to help. If you decide to do this, do let us know in the comments which five books you picked and let us know how it went, if you managed it. You can post about this anywhere on social media, use the hashtag five books, five stars, five days and we will come and congratulate you. There is no prize but pride, but that's good enough, right? I've also been asking around the office and I've got some of my colleagues to recommend their favorite books that they think you could easily read all in one day. So we've got a bunch of recommendations, but I'm gonna go first because I'm the host of this channel. So I'm gonna give you five books that I think you could read in a day each and I think you would give them all five stars. First up is The Center by Ayesha Manazir Siddiqui. This is the longest book on my list, but it is so page turning that I think you can do it. Pick a weekend day for that one and you can get through it all in one day. So this is a very mysterious, dark, funny book about a woman who works as a translator and she comes across the existence of The Center which is an institution that promises to make you fluent in any language of your choosing in just 10 days. It is very expensive and it comes at an extra secret sinister cost. The question is, would you do it? Would you become fluent in any language of your choosing no matter the cost? It is quite tempting. I'm very bad at learning languages, but I've always wanted to be better at it. I loved this book. I did genuinely read it all in one day, so I do think you can do it. And I just found it shocking and thought-provoking and it's a book that has really stuck with me ever since I finished it. So I'm going to recommend that as one of your five books in five days. For something a lot shorter that you can definitely read in one day, Open Throat by Henry Hoke is another of the books that I just can't stop thinking about ever since I finished it. This book comes out in a few weeks, so you're nearly there and then you can start the challenge. This is a book narrated by a mountain lion, a queer mountain lion, no less. And this lion goes about observing the people in the Californian hills where he lives. And through him, you really get to see the world in a whole new perspective. So it is about climate change. It is about homelessness. It is about the things that we as humans have allowed to happen and suddenly when seen through the perspective of this creature from nature um, you feel really differently about everything. For a short and sweet tearjerker before the coffee gets cold by Toshigazu Kawaguchi it is no secret that this is one of my favorite books ever. <laughs> I've talked about it in many, many book break videos. This is a book set in a cafe in Tokyo where customers can come and time travel. They can go back in time as long as they stay in their seat in the cafe and they can go back and sort of explore things from their past, regrets from their past. They only have a very short amount of time to do it in because they have to return to the present before their coffee gets cold. But they always come back having come to terms with something, having accepted something, having decided something about what they're going to do with their life next. This book and all of the following books in the series make me absolutely weep, uh, but definitely will be a five-star read for everyone who reads it. And again, you can read it all in one day. The, each book is made of four little vignettes. So it's really lovely, easy, quick read. Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield is just under 250 pages. So again, that's very doable all in one day. This is a gorgeous, romantic, sad, strange novel. It is about a woman whose wife went missing under the sea on a deep sea mission. She went missing for months and eventually came back 
but she was not the same person. She was possibly not a person at all. So it is this very surreal, creepy, sad book about loss and grief and grieving somebody who is still there, but has changed, who has been lost to you in some other way. I thought it was really, really beautiful. And finally, for my fifth recommendation, I'm going to recommend a children's book. It's always a good one to read quickly. A really lovely classic children's book, Catherine Called Birdie. This was made into a movie last year. You may have seen that. And I did read it all in one day. And I filmed myself reading it all in one day for book break. So I will link to that below if you want to go and see how easy it was to do. It's a really lovely feminist children's book. I didn't read it as a child, um, which is a shame because I actually really, really loved it as an adult. It's about a young girl in medieval times trying to resist her fate. She has been told that she will have to marry whoever her family tell her to, but she doesn't want to. She doesn't want that fate for herself. And it's all about her sort of coming to terms with the things that you can and can't resist and how you can continue to stay true to yourself and be yourself even within a life that you didn't necessarily want. So it's really deep and thought-provoking for a children's book and I loved it. So I think you could read all five of those books in five days and you would easily rate them all five stars. But let's hear from some of my colleagues about their recommendations so you can pick your favourites. I'm Carol Ann and I picked Fake Dates and Mood Cakes as my favorite short book. Um, I absolutely adore this book. It is such a warm hug. It is really Heartstopper meets Crazy Rich Asians and it's just a fun, bubbly, cute teenage love story. Um, and there's a corgi, so why not love it? I recommend King Kong Theory by Virginie Despont. Uh, it's a series of essays uh, by French feminist and activist Virginie Despont. Um, it is one of the best feminist books I've read in easily a decade. It challenged my feminism to a different degree than I was expecting. Uh, it kind of imbued feminism with economics in a way that I hadn't seen before. Um, and every single essay I think I read maybe seven or eight times just to wrap my head around them. Um, but they're incredibly uh, incisive. There's something so authoritative about how she writes um, and something about the first person experience that she uses in most of her essays that um, that really got to me. I didn't necessarily agree with all of her uh, conclusions, but that kind of makes the book better. Um, it challenged my feminism in a way that it hasn't been challenged in a very long time, and I, I can't stop thinking about it in my everyday life. Uh, so I really recommend uh, reading it. I recommend we had to remove this post by Hannah Bear Votes. Um, this book is really short. You'll get through it in absolutely no time at all. It's thrilling. It, um, has these really harrowing descriptions of, of things that go on on social media and it's really interesting to see how the character changes throughout the book and how the media you consume and the people you interact with can shape your worldview. I recommend The Order of the Day by Eric Vuillard. It is translated from French and it's only 129 pages. It's the story of a kind of meeting of the very powerful German businessmen in the run-up to the World War and there's also some scenes with Churchill and Chamberlain and basically very important powerful people before the Second World War and it sounds kind of dry but it's actually the opposite of that. It is all about the tone I would say this book. It's so funny. It's really really darkly funny. The author is judging them. He is judging them hard and it's kind of it's kind of a bit bitchy and I really really enjoyed that aspect of it. It's really propulsive. It's a really kind of chilling moment in history so it's full of tension but it is a novel and it is written in this amazing tone of voice that made me want to read more and more books by Eric Vuillard and he's actually got another book that's even shorter. It's only like 60 pages so you can read both in one sitting. Uh, so I'm recommending Summer Water by Sarah Moss, which I read maybe a year ago and I've been thinking about it ever since. It's incredibly sharp, it's really incisive, and it isn't so much a story as a series of stories set all over the course of the same day um, in a holiday chalet park. 
uh, outside of a Scottish lock and it's a miserable rainy day and all of these people from completely different walks of life um, are sort of at odds, at odds even with themselves, with others in their lives. There's teenagers, there's aging couples, there's a doctor, there are um, immigrant families and it's all interspersed with these incredible flashbacks to um, an ancient natural world that existed outside of these human foibles all at the same time. Um, it's so current, it's so contemporary, it really has its finger on the pulse of what people are thinking about every day. Every single person in the narrative is flawed, every single person is relatable at the same time. Um, and, and just the observational quality of the writing is really chilling. I cannot recommend it enough. Um, it moved me to read basically everything she's ever written afterwards uh, and you will not be able to get up once you start reading it, so find a comfy chair. Hi, it's me again, but this time I'm standing in for my colleague Wayne. I am going to give you a recommendation on Wayne's behalf. Just to confuse things, I will put his name and job title here so you know who this recommendation is coming from. But I have to say I really agree with it. I've also read and loved this book. So Wayne recommended The Grown Up by Gillian Flynn, which is a horror thriller. It's a really quick read, it's a novella, and it is brilliant and it is so creepy. It's about a woman who is working as a fake psychic, she's basically conning people into thinking that she's a psychic, but then she meets a woman called Susan who lives in this old house with her stepson Miles, and Susan is convinced that the house is haunted, and when our main character goes to check it out, she starts to think it actually might be, and this is one of those books that kind of blurs the lines, is it supernatural, is it not? You will be left to make up your own mind. This one gave me chills. So this is the recommendation from Wayne. The short book you can read in one day that I would recommend is The End We Start From by Megan Hunter. It's 17,000 words long, um, or if you're talking in pages, about that. Um, and it's the most astonishing story um, of a woman uh, giving birth to her first child in a London hospital just as the flood waters are closing over the city around her. So it's the beginning of this extraordinary uh, new stage in her own life and an extraordinary new stage in the life of the nation and soon after the baby is born she and her partner take their their son and leave town, they start travelling towards the border and you realise that this country of ours uh, has become a place of refugees and travel. Um, it sounds dark and it is, it's extremely pacey and thrilling, um, but it's also witty and funny and the whole thing that lifts it is the sense that no matter the fact that the world is falling apart, the world of this family is entirely about the mother and her baby and the intensity of what it is to watch a small person's eyes open properly for the first time, to understand that they're seeing objects outside of one foot away from their face, that their fingers and toes are uncurling. Um, it's an extraordinary exploration of new motherhood and an amazing piece of a climate dystopia. I recommend uh, A Whole Life by Robert C. Taylor. It's a book that you can race through in one day. It's it kind of does what it says on the tin, a whole life in 150 pages. It's a really spectacularly sparse uh, piece of writing, but it's really beautiful in the way that it managed to capture quite a, quite a quiet um, atmosphere of, it basically tells the story of a man who lives in the Austrian Alps and he grows up kind of before modernity hits the Alps and throughout the course of his life the, the modern world arrives and um, it's kind of how he grapples with that. And I don't want to give too much away because there's no point in giving a spoiler when you can find out everything there is to know about a book in a day, but it's really pacey, it's really easy to get through, um, but it's just beautiful and it just makes you kind of reflect on life and it's perfect if you've got a day that you don't know how to fill, fill it with a whole life. Just to add to Emma's recommendation, I'm going to be doing a reading from Open Throat by Henry Hoke. I love this book so much. It's such a fever dream of a novel. It's queer, it's mysterious, it's sad, it's longing, and it covers so much in such a short amount of time and really packs a punch and you'll never be able to forget Heck of the Lion. So I'm going to do a short reading for you now. 
I have trouble sleeping in the twisted trees because there are so many hikers who go by and talk loud all day. They talk about how no one in LA has real jobs, but from what they describe as real jobs, I don't think they have them either. LA is a mecca for the underemployed, they say. To be employed, they need skills. They say to each other, you've got so many marketable skills. I go over my skills. My skills are hiding so long that you forget that I'm there, watching and listening until I memorize your habits and your language. But killing is my job. A big lizard crawls by and I smash its head against a rock and swallow half of it. That's trauma. That's too much trauma talking, says a girl on a phone. It's all trauma. She goes silent and she stuffs her phone into a bag hanging from her shoulder. And when she pulls her arm out, a piece of green paper flutters to the ground behind her. I know the paper is important because I've seen people drop it before. And they say shit and they run and grab it and they say that was close. The trauma girl doesn't do any of that. She doesn't even notice that it fell and she keeps going and I wait and the moon appears above me. I jump down and pick up the paper in my teeth. I try to taste its importance. Nothing. I would hotly recommend William Maxwell's So Long See You Tomorrow, which is a tiny but immensely powerful book. It's only 176 pages and every page packs a punch. The prose is plain, it is unadorned, it is clear, it is simple, and the emotional pull of the novel is like almost nothing else. It's the story of two boys in rural America who are friends, and um, Cletus is the son of a farmer, a farmsteader, and his family are great friends with their neighbour farmers, the Johnsons. And it all goes horribly wrong on the day that both boys hear a shot. And the shot they hear is Cletus's father killing Mr Johnson. Because Mr Johnson, it turns out, has been having an affair with Cletus's mother. Um, later, Cletus's father is found shot by himself, drowned as well in a stream, and the boy's life changes forever. And he's sent to live with other family members in town. And our narrator is looking back on this some 50 years later. And he says that at school, at high school, he suddenly, having not seen him for years, sees Cletus, and he walks straight on by. And he wonders why he did that. And then he imagines what might have happened how what happened happened, how that shot came to be fired. And he imagines what life must have been like for Cletus, who had lost everything. And why he, as a boy who was more or less programmed to be kind, was so not kind to Cletus. So it's a story of adultery, it's a story of passion, it's a story of family, it's a story of friendship, of failure, of love, and of shame. And that is told in extraordinarily plain, simple, clear language, and I could not love it more if I tried. And it's only a testament to the fact that I haven't read it for a very long time until yesterday, that I'm not actually blubbing, because I used not to be able to talk about it without crying, because it's such a wonderful novel. So let me know if you're going to take us up on the five books, five stars, five days challenge. I'm going to be doing it, not with those five books that I recommended because I've already read those. So I'm going to go and choose five new books uh, and I will let you know what I pick. And use the hashtag anywhere you post about it online because then we can find you and chat to you about it. You can also tag us at Bookbreak UK if you're posting on Instagram, at Pam McMillan if you're posting on TikTok. Or Twitter or just comment below and let us know how you got on uh, and for a bunch more recommendations I will link here to a video I made in February which was all made up of books under 200 pages so any of those you could read all in one day so you've got so many recommendations from us and I'll see you next time all the lights just turned off